I am your host for today's show of Missoula Live. Um, first, we've got some uh, MCOT announcements. Um, of course, everyone knows that the water trial is going on right now and is in full swing. You can check that out on our live, local live um, stream. Go to MCAT.org and underneath the video on demand tab, it shows um, live local and you can click that and go to the play, play page and just press play. And you'll be able to see it live streaming, uh, live streams between 9 and 5 every day during the week, except for Tuesdays. And then, of course, we've got orientation every second Wednesday of the month between 5.30 and 7. You can come to orientation and check out how to use all the equipment and all the gear, and you'll be able to check out things for your own personal use. You can call MCAT at 542-MCAT or 542-6228 to set something up or set up an orientation. Up next, we've got our summer camps are going on this summer. You can start to sign your kid up today. This is for ages 9 to 13 um, to participate in our camps. We've got three camps geared towards wildlife videography, stop motion, and movie ca making camp where all the kids come together and they help uh, do all the different parts of what it goes into making a movie. And then uh, we should always touch on our social media website so you can find out more about MCAT on MCAT.org. Or you can go to our Twitter page. MCAT just got a Twitter page where we have been live tweeting everything from the water trial. And that is uh, MCAT at Missoula. I do believe. And then next month, we've got to touch on something that April 22nd is our 25th anniversary. So from 4 to 8, it's on a Wednesday, it's Earth Day. We are going to be celebrating MCAT's 25th anniversary, 25 wonderful years of DIY television. So, of course, you guys can come down and celebrate that with us. But as well as that on Earth Day, we've got a guest here who's going to speak about Earth Day. We've got Bill Pfeiffer here from Missoula Urban Development. How are you, Bill? I'm great. How are you now? I'm good. And so we are talking about um, the Earth Day, right? So what's going on yeah, with that? So um, our Earth Day celebration is actually not on Earth Day just because it's a weekday. Um, and uh, so our Earth Day celebration is April 26th, which is the Sunday following Earth Day. Um, and yeah, we're, we're pretty excited about it. Uh, big event in Karis Park. It's kind of the first mm -hmm. real event of the season in Karis Park. So cool. Yeah. And so, um, what, and what number of event is this your Earth Day? This event? will be our ninth annual. Okay. Um, okay. and I don't know, Mud possibly was involved with Earth Days, I'm sure before mm -hmm. nine years ago, but for the past nine years, every year we've thrown a party in Karis Park for okay. the community. So yeah, Great. we're looking forward to this year. And so how did all this get developed? How did the idea come to start this party? Um, you know, I think I was part of the first one, uh, although not from the MUD side. I wasn't mm -hmm. working at MUD at that time. I was working for another organization. But um, uh, I believe one of the former MUD staff members had an idea that uh, this would be a really great uh, community event. And uh, I, I worked with Montperg on that first one, um, and we put it together, and it's, it's been going strong without me cool. <laughs> until last year was my first year working for MUD. So, oh, that's nice. Um, so, of... yeah, last year was the first time I organized it from, from that side. But, mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I've been involved with it for a number of years, and it's usually a really fun time. That's so. awesome. And so what goes on at this event? Um, well, um, every year we have a theme. Um, this year's theme is Moving Missoula Towards Zero Waste. Um, our partners, Sustainable Business Council and Home Resource, uh, and I are, and us are working on this together. Um, it is a fundraiser for MUD. Um, it's one of our main fundraisers for the year for supporting our programs. Um, we have a bunch of different things going on in the park. Uh, new this year will be a 5K race. Uh, so for the first time... Cool. Uh, for the first time ever, Mud is going to have a 5K. Um, awesome. What's the, what's the trail on that 5K? Um, we're going to leave Karis Park. We're going to run out towards Osprey Stadium and come back. Um, we've got, we've got the, the course lined out. Uh, uh, racers will receive if, uh, you know, if they do finish the race, um, which is usually pretty doable for a 5K. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you receive a, a, a tote bag. Uh, it's monogrammed. Um, and you also receive a stainless steel uh, pint cup. Hey. Uh, so nice. it's not a glass, but it's a cup. Nice. Um, monogrammed, of course. Um, and any racers 21 and over will receive a free beer from our beer garden. 
Um, so I guess that'll bring me to what else we have going on. Yeah. Um, we have a ton of local food uh, at this year's event. Uh, we're going to have beer from Big Sky Brewing, uh, New Belgium Brewing, and the Kettle House. Awesome. Um, Everyone's favorites. Yep. Uh, we're, we're, we'll have a bunch of different kids' activities. Home Resources is going to have spin art for, for kids cool. to work on. Um, we're going to be hosting uh, a one-hour free workshop on composting. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the coolest thing about this oh, year's neat. event is that um, we're really trying to make it as close to possible a zero-waste event. Um, and basically what that means is that any waste we generate at the event, we're going to try and recycle or compost or reuse. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're going to be needing some volunteers to help us with that. Are you? So. Okay. Okay, so where can people get in contact if they want to volunteer? Uh, you know, the easiest thing to do, uh, well, well, first of all, we have a number of uh, volunteer positions uh, posted on Volunteer Missoula, okay. um, which is a new website, uh, re reasonably new to Missoula, which is basically just to help people find volunteer opportunities awesome. in That's Missoula. Awesome. That's such a good resource. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And so we have a few different opportunities posted there. Um, we're looking for zero-waste ambassadors. Uh, so... We'll be looking for, you know, people to basically uh, help staff the day of the event to help people know where to put their waste. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that we've discovered is that if you have people helping um, at trash locations, it'll really help people know, you know, how to separate their recycling from their food scraps and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. so, so we'll have that. Uh, we're going to need some people to help us with that. Awesome. Uh, we're going to need at least 10 people to help us with the race, uh, just, you know, being stationed on the race route mm -hmm. uh, and then we need people to help us set up and tear down um, we set up in the morning the event kind of starts at around 11 and, and what time do you get there to set up um, we'll probably we'll definitely be there by 9 um, we might even be there earlier this year because yeah. of the run yep um, but usually we we start setting up around 9 um, you know Missoula Downtown Association is really helpful they send over some people to help us with that oh good um, but we still need some help with mm -hmm. setup, and then we tear down around five o'clock. Um, you know, and we, we sometimes need somebody to help uh, with the bands. You yeah. know, help help with that. Um, you know, there's all sorts of different jobs we come up with. So. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like you need a lot of volunteers. Yeah. I mean, it's it. We need we're, this well, year. It's because, a lot of work because of the race. We're going to need a few more volunteers. Yeah. Than we do, and so, so, what time does that race start? Uh, the race is going to start at eleven. Okay. Okay. Um, and then yeah. is it take like an hour? Yeah, I mean, a 5K is about three miles, so, yeah, um, you know, most people, even if they're walking it, will finish it within an hour. Okay. Um, you know, we're, we're anticipating that. The, the event usually kicks off around noon. We, we were hoping to have the race a little later so that the event would totally be rocking by the mm -hmm. time people got done with the race, but there's another race that day. Mm -hmm. um, so we moved the race about an hour earlier um, just to make sure that everyone can have access to the trails oh, nice. um, for the day. But, um, but we'll still be, you know, I'm sure we'll have vending going um, and we'll probably be serving beer a little yeah. bit before noon. So, okay. so when awesome. people get done with the race, um, yeah, we're hoping that they Chug can just <laughs> eat, some food. Yeah. eat some food, hang out, um, check <laughs> out you know we're, we're you know i sh kind of forgot to mention that usually we have displays and exhibits um, oh. by you know a variety of uh, missoula's you know top green businesses and cool. environmental organizations what are some so, of the organizations that are going to have some um, exhibits so this year um you know like i said home resource and mm -hmm. sustainable business council will be there um you know also montana audubon will be there um you know we have a full list and geez i'm, I'm kind of blanking <laughs> on everybody okay. right now um <laughs> But, um, but, yeah, you know, we, it's a pretty sizable number of organizations. We usually have about 30 different groups tabling, okay. um, either, you know, vending, selling cool stuff, uh, or just letting you know about the issues that they're working on. Um, and this year, because we're, we're doing the zero waste theme, is that's, that's really what we're encouraging people to, to come down and talk about. You know, we're really... Um, we understand that Missoula's got a little ways to go before we're mm -hmm. like a zero waste community. Yeah. Um, but we really want to highlight some of the things that, that we can do to be to do better. Um, you know, everyone kind of complains about glass recycling yeah. or the lack thereof in Missoula. Yeah. Um, and the and the other thing we're really trying to call attention to is just compost um, and what we do with food scraps. You know, I think a lot of folks assume that 
if things are biodegradable and they go to the landfill, it's not that big a deal. But a lot of stuff the landfill gets sealed yeah. um, into an, an, an oxygen-free environment, which really kind of keeps it from breaking down. So mm -hmm. you know, even if you send your food scraps there, they're not going to break down as fast as they would, say, at a composting facility. So interesting. Um, so yeah, we're really trying to kind of not really, you know, Earth Day is about celebrating what we yeah. do well, um, but we also want to, you know, kind of say, hey, Missoula, these are a few things that we could do a little bit better, and wouldn't it be cool if we did it? Cool, so. yeah, and that's awesome. And so what bands do you guys have? Um, right now we have Dry Spell and okay. the Dodgy Mountain Men. Okay. Um, we usually pick up at least one more, and we'll have a singer-songwriter um, part in the in the beginning of the program. Mm -hmm. um, one of our board members is a, is a great singer-songwriter, and he tends to perform at our events. Cool. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have some stuff going on pretty much throughout the afternoon. We'll have entertainment for people. So uh, awesome. it sometimes takes a little while to fill in the schedule, but we've, we've got two great bands already on the books, so we're excited about that. Awesome. That sounds great. And so yeah. where can people find more information about this event? Yeah, super easy. If you go to mudproject.org, mm -hmm. um, just go to the bottom of the page, and uh, we have a, a little form there you can click on. You can click to sign up for a race. Um, you know, race is $25 dollars to enter and um, it's really something that helps us um, be able to, to run the programs that we run like the Missoula Tool Library, um, the Missoula Truck Share Program, and our Sustainability Workshop Series. Cool. Tell me about the Missoula Tool Library. Yeah, so you know people are, a lot of people are still just finding out about the Tool Library which yeah. is cool. Um, we have one of the oldest tool libraries in the United States. Um, it is exactly what it sounds like. Cool. Um, it's a library. Um, once you become a member of the library, you're allowed to borrow any of the tools we have. Um, we have over 2,000 different tools um, for people to use everything from, you know, carpentry tools mm -hmm. uh, to automotive stuff to lawn and garden care. Um, it's a really great resource if you're a new property owner or a renter. Um, and you have maybe one or two projects to do a year yeah. and not enough to really warrant, you know, spending 500 to a thousand dollars on new tools or renting them, which is also very expensive. Um, so that's probably our most popular program. That's it's been around really since neat. the late eighties. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a lot bigger than it mm -hmm. used to be now. And, uh, it's getting more and more popular. We serve, Oh, over 400 households oh, um, in Missoula. Oh, very cool. So. And then so is the truck share program exactly what it sounds to? Yes. Um, yep. It's, it, we, have a tr we have a truck. Uh -huh. um, if you're a member of MUD, you're allowed to check out the truck. Um, this really helps people reduce their large vehicle trips. Uh -huh. um, so, for example, I used to have a, a Toyota, and I, I sold it and now have, like, a, a little car. And <laughs> the three or four times a year I need to use a truck um, for hauling or whatever, yep. um, I can just check out the MUD truck it's five dollars an hour 55 cents a mile so it's a lot cheaper than renting a, a vehicle through a vehicle rental place totally um any money in gas you put into the truck we take off your bill so you know if you have a pretty busy day and you pay you put in a tank of gas then you can just bring it back um, oh, it's just like you know very cool yeah that's um, really neat and yeah. then so people can get on your website to find out yep more information about that yeah and right now we're kind of transitioning to a new membership system mm -hmm. so we don't have an online membership currently for this week mm -hmm. um, but hopefully by next week we'll be back up and running um, we're completely digitizing the tool library oh, very right cool. now um, membership and inventory uh, so people will be able to go to our page online uh, hopefully starting in April um, they'll be able to search our entire inventory um, with pictures and everything mm -hmm. um, and they'll be able to sign up for memberships um, that way and uh, yeah so our membership our membership gives you access um, to Tool Library and Truck Share. Very cool. You don't need to be a member to take our workshops. Okay. Um, there is a 50% discount for people who are members. Um, most workshops are $10, $10 for members, $20 for non-members, unless, um, unless it's really something fancy that we're building um, and you get to take home something really nice. Um, but for the most part, um, our workshops are pretty affordable. Um, and, you know, so... Very cool. You can check out our website for that, too. We have a tree pruning workshop coming up this Saturday. Oh, very, okay. Um, what time? It, it's, uh, it's at 9 a.m. at Orchard Gardens. Um, space is limited, so you do need to sign up ahead of time. You mm -hmm. can do that also on our website awesome. um, pretty easily. And uh, also check us out on Facebook. Yep. Um, you know, we tend to have things. If, you, if you're looking for real-time information, Facebook's the way to go. So. Yeah. 
Totally. Okay, so when and where, again, is uh, the Earth Day celebration? Oh, so the Earth Day celebration, one more time, is in Karis Park Pavilion, mm-hmm. downtown Missoula, uh, on Sunday, April 26th from 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. And awesome. so we're hoping that this mm-hmm. weather that, well, it's not so nice today, but no. <laughs> um, the it's weather better. that we've been having uh, keeps keeps uh, keeps going. And, uh, you know, we'll be under the pavilion. So if there's a yep. little rain, we'll, we'll be out there rain or shine. So, awesome. so awesome. please stop by if you want to run the race. Get on to our website, and then, sign um, up for the 5K. And where is registration done for signing up for that race? For the 5K, um, yeah. it's, there's an online form. Okay, um, great. If you go to the Earth Day page on our website, uh, mudproject.org, uh, there's two links. You can also, if you're interested in being a sponsor, yep. uh, or if your organization is interested in, in exhibiting, there's a link there you can click on to, to, to sponsor, um, become an exhibitor. There's also a link uh, that will take you to the race sign up. Awesome. So. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Bill. Hey, thanks so much, Mel. There you have it, great. everyone. We will be right back on this edition of Missoula Live. The Harlequin duck is one of Montana's rarest birds. Currently wintering on the Pacific Ocean, Harlequins migrate to Montana streams to breed in the spring. One of the most productive areas is McDonald Creek in Glacier Park. This 10 mile stretch of the creek from Lake McDonald to Logan Creek produces 25% of all of the chicks that are produced in Montana and has the highest breeding density of Harlequins in the lower 48. But when no harlequin duck chicks were found on McDonald Creek a few years ago, researchers wanted to learn more. And we had radio transmitters on these females, and we wanted to look at, you know, where in the stream do the females want to be in relationship to different stream features and habitat features, and also distance to the going to the Sun Road. While Montana is on the southeastern extent of the harlequin's range, there is concern these rare ducks are in decline. Across the board, they're just difficult to study. They occur in these remote locations. Very little research has been done, and we just don't know much about them. Through his research, Hansen believes we need to continue to monitor Montana's harlequin ducks and conserve the waters they use to maintain the harlequin in the future. It's really important to know what are the focal streams, what are the important streams where a lot of these ducks are coming from to focus our efforts to think about you know, how the stream is being managed. I'm Winston Greeley, out among Montana's fish, wildlife, and parks. I'm Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm a tenor hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hope. All right, everyone, and we are back. And I just wanted to let you all know that I got a word that the live stream for the water trial is finished now. So you can check back on it um, Wednesday, as tomorrow's Tuesday, at uh, 9 a.m. on the Video On Demand local live. But right now we're here with some ladies. So you guys are talking about a used book sale, right? That's it. Yeah, and so we've got a Nancy, Ann, and Trisha here. And so tell me about this new used book sale. What's going on? We've been having this used book sale now for uh, over 40 years, and it's a wonderful Missoula event. Mm-hmm. It is sponsored by AAUW, okay, which what is, is that the state? American Association of University Women, Okay. and PDK, which is Phi Delta Kappa. Okay. And so these two organizations join together to make it work. And it's just a wonderful opportunity for the community to uh, donate books, to, you know, you can clean your library shelves and donate the books. Do some spring cleaning. Which is wonderful, yeah. yes, that, that is the bonus. Yeah. And to, uh, and then to come to the sale because we have wonderful titles. I, we brought a few books with us today. Yeah, what kind of books did you guys have? Uh, well, the, my top one is Ooh, uh, the head. very favorite uh, children's book, The Cat in the Hat. And He's so much genius. We always have a big assortment of children's books, but awesome. maybe some of my friends here would like to yeah. tell you about some of the categories. We have lots of cookbooks. Oh, perfect. And everything from 
very, very old tomes uh, from the early part of last century. We have a few of those cookbooks that people really, really want to find because they have their old favorite grandmother's recipes in them. And we have always a table of books on Montana and the West. Of course. And you have to have those. Oh, yes. Oh, awesome. Yes. And so what is that one about that you're holding? This is uh, Rick and Susie Gratz's book. They, uh, lots of wonderful photographs and information about Montana. Awesome. <laughs> and then we, we also have a lot of um, Montana authors. Very important. Of course, Ivan Doig. Uh -huh. uh, we'll have quite a few of his, of his books. And what does he usually write? Well, they, I would call them uh, probably historic fiction, wouldn't right. you say? Yes. Historic yeah. fiction. Okay. But very, very, cool. very popular, this series by Ivan Doig. Cool. And then this one, When the Meadowlark Sings, is by a woman named uh, Nedra Sterry. Mm -hmm. And it, it's about her own personal adventures and her life as a, as a teacher out there were yeah, out uh, in the prairie. very, very small <laughs> situations, yes. Right. But I actually, cool. I actually was personally acquainted with her, so I, I really enjoyed reading yes, this. But I think the book would be uh, very readable for anybody who likes to read about Montana. So we always have a good Montana section. Good, that's we're important. We're proud of that. Tricia, what kind of books do you have down there? Well, I just picked up a couple <clears throat> that you know, easy reading type books. And it's just amazing the readers that are in the Missoula Valley. Yeah. And we have so many people that read books and they're so generous about donating them. Mm -hmm. And so for the price at a dollar fifty an inch. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. So what is the pricing on these books? We stack the books up on the table. Okay. We measure them. Awesome. Let's say you have Ten inches of books. This yeah. is not quite ten inches, <laughs> and it's a dollar fifty an inch. That would be eleven dollars and oh, fifty cents. Wow. Okay, that's. How did you come up with that price judgment? That's so funny. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we've we've just done it for years. It was okay. easier than trying to price every book. Exactly, you can't really mm -hmm. put a price mm -hmm. on each book. Well, although some of we do have quite a few collectible books, and we have a rare book expert who is part of our group. Okay. So she puts the prices on those and yeah and so, so you sell those individually yes, yes yeah cool and then so how did this start this book of sale well many of the branches of AAUW American Association of University Women across the United States have book sales to raise money for scholarships has been um, typically what the, the money has been raised for we also give to educational projects um, such as there was a STEM workshop for middle school girls last year at the university, and so we helped provide 10 scholarships for that. Oh, cool. And um, then PDK also gives scholarships at the university. Mm -hmm. um, and support art projects, too. We, That's good. We gave money for the Women's History Mural in the Capitol this past year. Very so, neat. Yeah, yeah. Very neat. And, uh, and it has become one of our favorite activities because we get to see the community, we get to see all kinds of books to read, mm -hmm. and, and we really feel it is uh, a service to the community because they can get a really good deal on reading matter. That's really awesome. <laughs> and so when is this book sale? The book sale will begin on Thursday, okay. April 16th. Where? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, no, I realize I don't know where it is. Uh, <laughs> the sale is at the uh, Orchard Homes Country Life okay. Club, where which is, is that? it's on Third, just past Reserve. Okay. And it's immediately on the on the left. Mm -hmm. There's a big reader board out mm -hmm. there, and uh, it's it's very visible. If, if you get to Karis Nursery, you've gone too far. Okay. Yes. You'll have to come back. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's that big clubhouse that's there that's used yeah. for a lot of events. But and so just we love it the... for the book sale. Yeah. And so what number book sale is this? We're up in the done? 40s. We're, yes. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Wow. We yeah. haven't all been involved yeah. in that quite yeah. that long. <laughs> and so what are your guys' roles there? Well... Uh, Nancy and I are co-chairs. Okay. And Trisha's on our committee and is okay. very valuable. 
Mm -hmm. She and her husband have a truck. Oh, nice. Yeah. All <laughs> books from our, we, we ship collect, all the books. We huh? collect a lot of books throughout the year, and so we have a storage unit that we keep them in. Oh, very and, cool. Um, the, the sale does start on Thursday the 16th yep. from 10 to 8 p.m., okay. and then it is Friday and Saturday, April 17th and 18th from 10 to 5 p.m., yeah. and then Sunday is our bag sale okay, from and then 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and that's all the books that you can get in a paper grocery sack which we provide without it ripping without it ripping <laughs> <laughs> is five dollars it's five dollars oh, yes. that sounds like a really really good deal and yes. if people want to drop books off yeah. they are thinking yes. they need to get rid of some of their good books mm -hmm. uh, Monday Tuesday and Wednesday of that week we are accepting them from 10 until 7, Monday, Tuesday, and 10 until noon, just drop them off at the clubhouse. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. And so what's the address on that clubhouse again? It is 2537 South 3rd Street West. Okay, so don't go past Karis Nursery. Yes. Hit Karis mm -hmm. Nursery, you've gone too fast. Yes. Okay, yes. awesome. And then where can people find out more information about this? Um, they could call those two numbers. We, you yeah. can call, we have two numbers you okay. can call. 543 Five nine seven five, or five four nine three five three eight. Okay, awesome. Well, is there anything else that you guys could tell me about this awesome book sale? I always love the opening moment of the sale. Uh, people line up mm -hmm. outside, and when the door opens, it's about probably maybe fifty people. Plus in line, yeah, in and then the door opens. It's as if the building swallows this whole <laughs> line of people who come in. Interesting. When they come in, we have everything set up by categories. Mm -hmm. And if you've been there before, we, we set it up basically the same every year. So it's interesting. People go immediately to their favorite category and start to look and peruse the books. We just I, there's a lot of excitement to it, and I would say the whole thing is something of a treasure hunt mm -hmm. because you do not know what you will find. Yeah. Some of the categories we haven't mentioned uh, would be uh, art and the, the arts. We end up with a lot of books that uh, are about art history and how to do arts. Uh, we end up with many music books. Oh, fun. And then uh, the foreign language section is always big. Mm -hmm. We have just a big variety of languages that are featured. Some cool. people go for the, the reference books, that is, the, <laughs> uh, the dictionaries. Mm -hmm. We don't have textbooks because they just don't sell very well. Yeah, but, yeah but I understand that. People <laughs> like the dictionaries, the dictionaries. And then we always have a big religion section. Oh, good. Uh, Bibles yeah. and uh, devotional material. And is that pretty popular? And it's it very is. popular. Good. Mm -hmm. What's the most popular category you think you have? Mm -hmm. I'd say Montana and the West. Oh, um, yeah? The table is, yeah. that's where people usually mm -hmm. go first. And it's interesting, uh, as uh, Nancy said, when people come in, you know, they, the building swallows them up, and then all of a sudden, it's totally quiet. I know that's such great imagery. Because they're all I can reading. just imagine the building totally, just like swallowing yeah, the totally crowd. Because everybody wants a good book to read. That and sounds so wonderful and so peaceful too. Yeah, so yes. come to the sale. Yeah. You know, buy books and read. And so, what categories do you guys put by the front doors? Um, do you plan it that way at all? No, you come in and then. Um, I would say immediately on the left would be novels. 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 And especially, oh, and then a table of, of specially priced books because they are really cool ones. Yeah. Uh, good new novels, um, uh, picture books that are really in, in really good shape and in, uh, in demand. Mm -hmm. And then books that have been signed by yes. the author yes. will, awesome. will be found yeah. there first editions, collectibles. Perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then before we go, what kind of condition does the book have to be? Like, what are the standards of accepting a book, donated book? 
but I'm sure they can have to be kind of look good. And no books that have been in the bathtub or in the cat litter box. Okay. <laughs> have you had have you had those mm -hmm. before? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Books that you would be glad to give to somebody else to read. Yeah. We would love them. Okay, so no drawing in them. Yeah. yeah. Well, or no mildew. Yeah, no mildew. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, ladies. And uh, we will thank be you. right back after these quick commercial breaks. Nine one one operator nine one one. Where's the emergency? One twenty seven. Been there. Okay. What's going on there? I'd like to order a pizza for delivery. Ma'am, you've reached nine one one. This is an emergency yeah. line. Uh, large with half pepperoni, half mushroom. Um, you know you've called 911. This is an emergency line. Do you know how long it'll be? Okay, ma'am. Is everything okay over there? Do you have an emergency or not? Yes. And you're unable to talk because... Right, right. Okay, is there someone in the room with you? Just say yes or no. Yes. Okay, um... It looks like I have an officer about a mile from your location. Are there any weapons in your house? No. Can you stay on the phone with me? No. Uh, see you soon. Thank you. Whenever you cough or sneeze, cover your mouth. Do so, please. This is a filmmaker. You can often recognize them from their crazy eyes brought on by long hours. Come on, guys. Rolling? Good. When hiking in bear country like this, it's important to remember your essentials, like bear spray and knowing how to use it. Liam! Where's my bear spray? Uh, I put it in the bottom of your pack. I didn't mean... How am I supposed to get it quickly? When adventuring in bear country, remember, bring bear spray and know how to use it. Hike in groups, make noise, and don't run. Be bear aware. All right, everyone, we are back. We're here with Teresa Cox, and we are talking about the carousel for Missoula. Um, and so what's going on with the carousel for Missoula right now? Well, this is our 20th anniversary. Oh, Can you awesome. believe the carousel's been there for 20 no, years? No, I can't. Um, so we're doing a lot of really fun things this year, but the biggest thing that we are working on this year is an expansion to our building. And it, it's, quite a, it's quite a lengthy process to get something like that done because the building actually belongs to the city. Oh. After, we bought, after we paid for the construction of the building, we gave it to the city because we're on city land. So we had to go through Parks and Recreation and make sure that we were okay to use the little space that we wanted to use, and then through the city council, um, and they said, sure, that's great, build awesome. onto the building. We're going to build a museum. Oh, fun! Which will be really fun. Even 20 years later, people don't remember the story of how the carousel came to be. It was all built by volunteers. When we opened um, in 1995, we had over 100,000 hours of volunteer work oh in the gosh. carousel. And it's a really important message to preserve and to pass on um, to other generations, that if you want to make your community better, mm -hmm. go out and do something about it. And the carousel is such a great story about everyone in the community working together, of all socioeconomic levels. Everybody was equal. Everybody was having a great time. Um, so we really want to preserve that. A lot of the volunteers we had when we started the carousel are um, aging. We yeah. lost three really important volunteers oh. this last year, four really important volunteers this last year, and others are just too infirm to come down anymore. Yeah. So we really want to capture their stories before we can't. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, yeah, I think that's that'll wonderful. be fun. And we'll also put a workshop in there. Right now the workshop is in the back half of the gift shop. It's yeah. really small, makes the gift shop really small. So by doing that, we also hope to attract and retain more volunteers. We still do carving and painting and work on the mechanical works. Very cool. Um, of course, we have all the animals we need. We have mm -hmm. had for 20 years. But we do carousel animals for other carousels that are being built by volunteers and also for local not-for-profits if they mm -hmm. want to do it as a fundraiser 
or like we have a horse at the Ronald McDonald House. There's a horse that can't make a dream um, just for the kids to climb on and oh, have nice. fun with. Yeah. So there's still a lot of carving going on. And we need those volunteers, especially the mechanical volunteers. Because if we have to start paying for somebody to take care of the frame and motor, we're in a world of hurt. Yeah. Those people are very important to us. And they're getting older. We really need some, some younger people. So if we have a great place for them to come and feel like they're really welcome, and they have a, a place just to hang out and to share ideas with each other, mm -hmm. that's a great thing for us as well. And where can people get in for, or like contact you to volunteer for all this? Um, they can they can just come down to the carousel on Tuesday nights at 7. Okay. The carvers meet on Tuesday nights at 7, and the mechanics meet on Tuesday nights oh, at 7. Once a year we run a carving class, oh, but you don't cool. have to take the class to carve. They'll just teach you if you show up. And that's in January, so it's too late for this year anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody's going to remember by next January. Yeah. So. <laughs> We do hope that with the museum and the workshop, we'll have room to do more of those classes. Right now, it's just really hard to get anything in there. Yeah. By moving the workshop out, as I said, we get to make the gift shop bigger again. Mm -hmm. We're also going to put an office out in the um, museum workshop area. Unfortunately, it won't be any bigger than it is now, but yeah. my office will move out there. And then we have a... Um, oh, the, and it looks like oh, the, good. the plans are up on the thing. We have a... Um, nice. What is my office now will become a party room classroom. Okay. So we can have meetings in there if a service group wants to have a meeting in the morning. Um, we can run classes for kids. I'm thinking about having a, a painting class for adults. Just all sorts of really That'd interesting be really things cool. that we can't do right now. And we're also getting a lot of new storage. Very Which cool. is really important. The carousel was built to be a warm weather attraction. Nobody thought it was going to be open in the wintertime. Yeah. The original plans didn't have a bathroom. Oh, wow. Well. Um, they said, oh, they can take the kids over to the bathrooms, you know, the yeah. Karis Park bathrooms. I had three small children. I said, no way. We need a bathroom in the carousel because yep. if one of them has to go, you don't want to drag all of them over there. Yeah, they'll all have to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It didn't have an office at all. You know, I don't know why we just didn't think there was going to be any administration. It was just going to open and we were going to run. It was free for all. Yeah. Let's just do it. Yeah. <laughs> so lots of, um, lots of, we've made a lot of accommodations Needed over the years. Needed improvements, right. definitely. Um, and we've just, just gone with what we had. And it's really time. You know, we're 20 years old. We're, yeah. we're becoming a grown-up now. Hey, yeah. It's you time for us to be Move to on do to college. Move, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Expand on your parents' house. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And so where is the museum going to be off of the current carousel? Toward the pavilion. Okay. So toward the back of the building, okay. toward the pavilion. Okay. It won't affect any of the circular doors. Very um, nice. So it'll be that behind the circular doors. gives it right. a cool it vibe does, yeah. to it. I like it. And Jay yeah. Kirby, who is the original architect of the mm -hmm. building, is doing the addition. So he's, he's keeping the feel of the addition the same as the original building. So it'll feel okay. authentic. Okay. Yeah. Good. And then so what is going on with the current expanding process? We're raising money right now. You're still raising money? I have money. not yet raised enough money to even put it out to bid yet. Yeah. We need about $309,000. We have about 66000 of that. I have lots of grants out, and I'm waiting to hear from those. Pretty optimistic about some of them. Um, certainly mm. could use support from the community. Yeah. yeah we got a $50,000 grant from a foundation in Helena that okay. doesn't want me to tell you who they are. Yeah, that's, that's uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> a $5,000 grant from Penny Onklin, who lives here in town. Uh -huh. And then uh, First Interstate Bank has just pledged $10,000 oh, nice. for it. Oh, very nice. So Awesome. Uh, yeah. And then so what other sponsors do you guys have? That's what we have so far. Yeah. We have some um, we have some smaller donations from just from private individuals yeah. to go into that to make it sixty six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But pretty excited. I think yeah. it's going to happen. And I'd like cool. to do it right after school starts the fall. Mm -hmm. Then we can get the shell done and be moving working inside once it turns into winter. So. Yep. Yep. Very true. Yeah. And then so is this going to affect prices at all? I do not know the answer to that yet. Okay. Um, I don't think it will affect ride prices because mm -hmm. I think it will all just be paid for with the grants and the fundraising that mm -hmm. we do. I think it's going to affect party prices. Yeah. And not so much because the building is going to affect party prices, but because our parties don't, they, they don't really... They cover themselves, but that's about all. We yeah. don't really make any money on, on the parties, yeah. which why it's why they're such a great deal. Yeah. Um, and we're happy to make them be a, such a great deal. So we won't do too much more yeah but we do have to do a little bit more just for the just to justify doing them yeah 
I understand yeah. that. And so how many horses do you guys have right now? There are 38 horses and two chariots on the carousel. Oh, yeah. We okay. have some replacement animals, including a dragon. Oh, very um, cool. His name is Scafty. <laughs> <laughs> and he right now is in the, the uh, window of the Merc. Okay. So we're trying to publicize our, all of our 20th anniversary events Very by neat. having some stuff on Main Street or on Higgins, which I think of as Main Street. Yeah. So as people <laughs> walk by, they see the things that are coming up. Yeah. So in May, we will do Kids Day. Okay. Um, we do that every year. We do mm -hmm. free rides on the Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. This year, it's on May 23rd. Okay. Um, that's something I could use volunteers for. If there's people out there who would like to help, we're going to have a track and field day for kids in the awesome. morning. And I can't really remember what time it starts. I think it's like 8.30, 8.30 yeah. to 9.30. 100 uh -huh. yard dash. Where's you know, that going to be? Softball toss in the grassy field to the west of Dragon Hollow. Okay. And it's being co-sponsored by Parks and Rec. Oh, fun. Parks and Rec are fabulous. Yeah, it's, it's, they do a lot for our community. Do, yeah, and they're really good neighbors and, and good friends to the good. carousel. The city is just a great friend to the carousel. Yeah. Um, so we could use a lot of helpers with the track and field event that day. Very cool. And then we'll do free rides all day. We'll have some vendors out on the plaza mm -hmm. and uh, just be a really fun day. That sounds great. And yeah. so are there um, tickets? Does it cost anything nope. for Kids Day? No, nope. they free? just show up. The uh, track and field day will have a registration. And that will, there'll be some cost to that because they'll have t-shirts. Yeah, And course. the t-shirts will list the events on the back. So as soon as one, a kid does the 100-yard dash, somebody will take a Sharpie and check that one off on the oh, back cute. of the t-shirt. So the t-shirt becomes the souvenir for that. Oh, event. cute. That's yeah. fun. Yeah. That's really fun. And then so that, when, what day is that kid's day? It's Saturday, May 23rd. Saturday, May 23rd. Um, we don't have any registration information up on the website oh, yet, really? but we'll okay. be getting that up soon. Okay. Uh, but people should plan to come down. Uh, the yeah. carousel will be open from 10 until 7 for free mm -hmm. rides that day, and it's just going to be a lot of fun, as well, it always is. What is your website? Carouselformissoula.com. Awesome. All okay. one word. And then so that's where people can find out um, your information and how right. to volunteer and everything like that? Yes, more information about the expansion, awesome. about uh, Kids Day, about our gala, which is in June this year. Mm -hmm. It's out at the Ranch Club to celebrate our 20th as well. Oh, we do cool. a fairy tale festival in July, and that's free to, ever, to all the kids who come to that. They come dressed up as fairy tale characters oh, or cute. superheroes. Uh, we had 500 kids the last couple oh, cute. of years, so it's just, it's chaos. Yeah. Luckily, oh my gosh, I bet. Two hours of chaos. Um, <laughs> we do Haunted Hollow cute. in October, so we do flashlight tours through Haunted Hollow, That's and we do a Santa's fun. Breakfast in December. And this year... Yeah, I do remember that Santa's Breakfast. Yeah, it's really year. fun. Um, yeah. On October 4th, we're going to do a new event called Let Me Tell You a Story About a Horse. Oh, cool. We'll have local celebrities host tables at um, Cafe Dolce. Mm. And my husband's going to donate wine. He's got this huge wine cellar and yeah. really needs to get rid of some of it. <laughs> so we're going to have wine. Cafe Dolce is going to do some great food. Um, Steve Riddle and the singing Sons of Beaches are going to entertain. And then at some point during the evening, each one of those cele the celebrities will get up and tell a very short story about a horse. That sounds really fun. Yeah, it'll be different. Music, um, interesting people talking, yeah. really good food, really good wine. And it's on a Sunday afternoon, like starts at 5 or 5.30. We haven't cool. really set that time yet. So that'll be a, a good thing as well. Cool. And so what's the gala that's out at the Ranch Club? Uh, dinner and auction. Oh, very nice. So uh, John okay. Floridus is going to entertain for us. Cool. We have, the carvers have made a little rocking paint. You know, one mm -hmm. of the horses on the carousel is called Paint, and he's the most popular <laughs> Oh, horse. is he? Which yeah. one is he? Um, he is Larry Perney's horse. So okay. Very simple lines, mm -hmm. bright, bright colors. And Larry actually painted him the first time he was painted. So Cute. beautiful horse. Um, so they've made a miniature paint. They've, they're making a miniature dragon. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also auction off the rights to design your own miniature Rocky. Cool. Yeah. So, that sounds fun. Yeah. Sounds like you've got a lot of fun events going on. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bet you are. And so when can people find out more? Where can people find out more information? At the website, um, okay. carouselformazula.com. Or they can call 549-8382. Awesome. Ask to talk to me. Ask Just ask questions of whoever answers the phone. If they don't have the answers, you can ask to talk to me, and I'll make up something. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then when and where, again, is um, this event? The Kids Day? Um, let's do, first let's do expansion. Okay. The expansion, we would hope that it oh, starts yeah. in it's, September. Yeah. I'm just looking for money right now. Um, feel free to give me a call. Yep. Uh, Kids Day is May 23rd. Awesome. Free rides from 10 to 7 with a yeah. uh, track and field day before that, track and field hour before that. Mm -hmm. And the gala is June 18th. 
fairy tale festival is I think the 25th of July. It's the last Saturday in July, and I believe okay. that's the 25th. Um, let me tell you about this, a story about a horse is October 4th. Mm -hmm. um, Santa's breakfast is the Saturday before Christmas, and we're going to have a booth at the fair this year, so people oh, can come fun. and learn Good. more stuff out there as well. So Good. lots of stuff going on this cool. year. Cool. And then, as always, you can check out everything on their website. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining thank me, you Teresa. Very much. I do believe that this is the end of the show. Um, as always, you guys can check out more information about MCAT at www.mcat.org. You can find out um, everything you need to know. You can check, watch our shows and our channels um, live streaming online. You can also check out the water trial on video on demand, local live, which will restart. Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. And you can check out our Twitter page, MCAT. Uh, it should be at MCAT Missoula. And um, Scott has been live tweeting uh, the water trial on there. But thank you for everyone that has come on. This program will rerun, should be almost every single day for the next two weeks. And so we will see you guys again in two more weeks. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.